one. All right, folks. All right, all right. Yep, I am no longer sheltering in place. I am now on my official beach back there. By the way, don't hate on this guy. He's cleaning it up for me, making sure everything's nice and clean as I have exited my place in San Francisco. You guys like this little background that's moving? Yeah. What do you think, huh? The only thing, you know, my next little video clip I should have is somebody coming over just delivering coffee and like scones or something. That should probably be more appropriate than the guy cleaning up in the back. How you doing? And, uh, and how's Snoopy doing? I know. Well, I'm happy I'm hanging out in the backyard. Man, you know, we're doing this in the morning. I swear, it looks like it's one o'clock in the afternoon in your place. I know. I like, know. what's up with the 105 degree Arizona weather back there? It's gonna be 90 today or whatever it is. I'm, I'm enjoying okay. it before it gets crazy hot. Okay, you see this guy right here? See how dark I am? I do not need 90 degrees. I'll be honest. Yeah, my skin. Well, good. Definitely darker on the top, <laughs> all over the place. Yeah, we got like all these tan lines and stuff. <laughs> I know. Seriously. Oh man, so how you doing? How's uh? Here's another week has gone by. Doesn't aren't these going fast? See, I thought sheltering in place would make this go slow, like that slow. No, it's going super fast. Look, it's been another week. Yeah, it just shows you. I mean, it just right? shows, it just makes us, I guess, reflect more about shit. <laughs> just like, I don't know, but you know, here's the thing: is that the weeks are going by fast. I didn't think it would go this fast being indoors. I thought it would go slow as molasses, and it well, just has not. When you're busy, it does. Okay, so I, I guess I think to the person because for, for folks who like work a nine to five and totally don't have much. To Maybe do, it is going slow, huh? It's probably going. Maybe because it's going super fast for me. I swear, like weeks feel like two days well, instead of seven. You're busy, so let's. Talk yeah, about I'm super busy. So let's talk about that busyness. So. We want to do something different today, everyone that's watching. And, and thank you again for watching these videos because, uh, you know, we do this out of love and we want to educate. We want to give good advice and give perspective as well, right? All those three things. And one of the things that we wanted to shed some light on today is, well, what does this look like? Because we've been talking about, hey, it's time to buy. Rates are super low. Okay, that's great. But what does it look like? So I'm going to share my screen and we're going to look like, we're going to look at a couple of scenarios. One is... What happens if you bought a house for a million dollars or if you bought a house for a million five? Let's start out here. So this is an example in the scenario of if you were to buy a million five or if you were to buy a million dollars. So if you were to buy a million five with 20% down, this is what it looks like. 20% down, your loan amount would be a million two. Your down payment would be 300,000. Your interest rate approximately, now keep in mind that rates change every single day. And if you want to reach out to me, I have a really great article not written by me that talks about how mortgage rates are really calculated and how they really work. A really, really good rate. Reach out to me and I'm more than happy to send you that article. So at a 3.75% fixed for 30 year rate, your total payment would be 7307 and 39 cents a month. Now let's break this down real quick. If you look at it, your principal and interest would be 55, 57, and 39 cents a month. Property taxes, assuming a 1.25% rate, would be $1,562.50. Then your hazard insurance, and this is just the insurance to insure the actual property, approximately $187.50 a month. So that gives you a total of $7,307 and 39 cents a month. Okay. Now, if we Go ahead. Sorry, you can ask me a question. Go, okay. jump in. This is based on a house, right? So it's not a condo. It's a single Not a condo. And you'll notice here when I opened it up that notice how HOA dues are at zero. Right. You see that? That's yeah. how you know. And yeah. So we're assuming a single family residence. That's okay. correct. And for folks that are looking at these, at, this, at these numbers, it's basically, so if there is HOA, then homeowners association fees, then we definitely have to add that on top of the payment. So just That's correct. That's correct. You would add it to this, whether it's 500 or 400, whatever the case may be. And then if you notice here, the cash to close. So cash to close item right here, all that means is it's a, your down payment of 300,000 plus an estimate of closing costs. Now, if you go here, you'll see that I've broken down the closing costs, right? And the down payment, it's all here. So let me ask you. So basically, this is based on twenty percent. So folks that want to do fifteen or ten percent, is that still an option right now? We're at Jumbo. That's a great question. You know, we I had a program that was five percent down, 
to $2 million that has gone away, we can, we can now do 10% down. Uh, so that is possible. Now keep in mind that whenever you put 10% down on these, you're gonna have to pay mortgage insurance. So if you notice here, going back to this, the breakdown of payment, notice how it says mortgage insurance, this is at zero because you're putting 20, but anytime you put less than 20% down, mm -hmm. you're gonna have to pay monthly mortgage insurance. So that will make your payment go up. But and yes, 10% down. Yes, yeah. Now, if we did the same thing, assuming a million dollars as opposed to a million five, notice that the total payment comes down significantly. I'm still assuming 20% down. So now your, your loan is going to be 800,000. Also, your rate goes down a little bit because it's less of a loan. And then your payment would be 47.59 and three cents and your cash to close, which again is down payment plus an estimate of closing costs goes down to 207, so almost $100,000 less, right? Is essentially what it's going to take to buy this. Now, one other thing that I wanted to do too is let's look at the other side. Maybe you're thinking yourself or asking yourself, well, should I keep renting or should I own? Right? What do the numbers show? Because look, emotions are very fickle, right? So one day we feel one day a certain way, and then another day we feel another, another way. Emotions are very fickle, but the numbers don't lie, which is one of the things I love about being in the numbers business is that this is what it looks like. So I'm assuming here at the $1 million purchase, does it make sense to buy a million dollar house or to continue renting at $5,000 a month? And I'm assuming $100 of renter insurance a month. So if you look here, what this is basically saying, and I can create this report for anyone, by the way, if you ever want one of these reports, please let me know. More than happy to do a custom one for you. The cut to the chase, what this is saying that at a million dollar purchase versus renting at 5,000 a month in seven years, because I used, if you notice here, seven years before you sell, let's say you kept the house for seven years, you will walk away with $644,085 more owning versus renting. Renting in seven years, your 75 G's essentially difference in cash flow negative because Keep in mind, number one, that mortgage interest is deductible to $750,000 and $10,000, up to $10,000 of annual property taxes are still deductible. Whereas if you're renting, you have zero deductibility. You have 100% exposure of your money every month that you're paying that $5,000. That's just basically, right? You're just paying to play. You're just paying for a crash pad. You're not building wealth and you're not definitely taking advantage of tax deductions. You got 100% exposure. There's, your money is just growing fungus, if you will. Fungus among us. Right. Questions? Yeah. So, okay. So looking at this, I mean, so it's a good way to describe how investing in real estate also helps your net worth. I mean, I could tell you, I when, once I um, invested again in real estate, like the past few years, my net worth has grown significantly. If I didn't use my savings or didn't strategically plan, I wouldn't have that. So a that's lot exactly of right. It's scary, you know, to invest in properties. But I would say throughout history, I mean, if you talk to everybody, whether they invested around the last Great Recession or prior to that or even after that, their equity growth has gone up. And it will go in its peaks and valleys, but it always does. So as long as it makes sense for you financially, you just really can't lose. Yeah, that, that is correct. That, that's exactly right. And so this is an interesting piece right here. By the way, this negative 75,000 comes from here. Then the seven years, you know, uh, cash flow difference between your payments on the mortgage side and then your rent. The difference is you're bleeding 75 G's, essentially. So let me ask how this all works. So basically on these numbers, so let's just say someone yeah. has no debt. You know, they're, they're, you know and, um, and sometimes people are partnering up. So whether someone buys it by themselves or if they have a few people or a couple people to get into a property, like what kind of income does that look like? Yeah, that's a great question. So on a million five, you would have to have zero debt going into it and an income of $17,000 a month gross. Now keep in mind, a couple things. Whenever a lender is looking at your income, if you are working for a company, your W-2, we look at the gross wages, not the net, 
the gross prior to taxes. And if you have bonuses and or overtime, that's considered to be variable income. We look at the last two tax years that you filed. You must have it for the last two years. You can't have it just for one year. Otherwise, you can't count it because we're going to do a 24 month average of the last two filed tax years mm -hmm. in order to calculate bonuses and overtime because that's considered to be variable. So when I talk about 17,000, that can be any combination of the last two years of average of bonus and overtime plus your wages, meaning what you actually get paid by weekly, weekly, monthly, or twice a month, however you get paid. Mm -hmm. That has to equal to $17,000. Now, that's for a million five, okay? Now, on, on a million, that would be 11000 approximately $11,000 a month. So okay. about $1,000 less. See, right? so now, that can be a combo of, of not just you, but it could be a combo of other people going on the loan with you, right? Could be yourself and a spouse, could be yourself and a cousin, whatever the case may be. Right. So, so if you're talking about like if there's no debt, so then you would adjust that. So say you have a car payment or you have credit cards or whatever. Or you're so let's say at the 11000 on a mil on a million, right? And let's say your car payment's 500 bucks. Well, I said you have to have $11,000, right, with no debt. So you'd have to have 11500 Right. Exactly. If you had the $500 car payment, you just add the monthly debt to that 11,000 that you need to qualify. That's how it works. See, so so a lot of times, you know, some people are making that money a month and some people yeah. are, if you're not, I mean, I would say get creative, work together. A lot of times, you know, you just have to kind of find a strategy, a strategy to get into something, get some security. And then later on, you either buy each other out, you you sell the property and you, you take- buy units, right? Yeah. Yeah. So can yeah, I- You buy you units. Uh, let's do a scenario. So I have a I have a duplex. It's a seven bedroom duplex. I'm not sure why it hasn't sold yet. It doesn't have a garage. And um, mm, okay, that, that might be one. That might be one. So let's talk about that. If someone wanted to buy, um, partner up, and they they're priced out of San Francisco, but they want to stay in the city, and um, so let's say it's one it's one point three, and one unit has four bedrooms and one unit has uh, three bedrooms. If someone wanted to buy, let's do that scenario, if you don't mind. Can we, is, is there time, is there a way to do that right now? If we're on the, doing this? Uh, is that gonna see be what, I'm going to unshare my screen and I'm going to go ahead. Let me run it while we talk. So you're talking about. 1.3. So okay. I'm going to do 1.3. Okay. And then so let's talk about for people partnering up with that. And then let's talk about someone running out the other unit, because um, I think sometimes we have to kind of get creative and try to find a way how do we leverage on a property so in this case if someone was really thinking strategically and they're already in a position that they don't really have a lot of parking or they don't really have a car and it's not, or there is street parking so if they're not if it's not a big deal then you could say okay let me see what the scenario is but if um i had someone reach out to me the other day that it was going to be two friends that work downtown yeah that okay have one share one unit just to kind of get into real estate together and just start somewhere and then rent the second unit um got it unit would rent for at least four thousand dollars okay so let's take a look at this real quick so at a million three which is right here folks uh, this is what it looks like so your payment would be 63 33 okay mm -hmm. so that would be your payment so assuming no debt that would be essentially fifteen thousand dollars a month. You would have to make. Okay, and that's on um, and that's on a multi-unit. That's based on a multi-unit property. Okay, so yeah. if you look at this at these numbers, one point three, the total payment is about sixty-three. If you yep. can rent, if if so, either if you have two people. Um, going into it and they have two separate families or whatever or you want one unit the other person wants the other you divide that payment in half and you're looking at lower than what you would pay for rent that's uh, exactly how you look at it and the way we structured it in the past is that you decide you know up front you negotiate with that other person as much as possible when you think you're going to sell mm -hmm. right yep. and and what percentage ownership depending on what 
a person brings in for the down because sometimes it's not 50 50 sometimes one person might maybe the person who's going to stay puts in 60 percent down payment the other person puts in 40 and guess what they're going to get 40 percent of the upside from the moment they bought to the moment that they're quote unquote leaving right, right. exactly and so you take a comp right then and there right your comps and then you you take the difference and you give them 40 percent, and that's the agreement that agreement by the way is not negotiated or paperwork is not given to when you buy the house that's a total on the side between you two you're right. going in as an owner occupied simple as that absolutely and both if you, living there because that's the truth right and so so if someone really want to be the strategic so say you could qualify up to 1.3 and you know there's a couple people or how many people are are getting qualified um and so say the payments total 6300 mm -hmm. and the other unit could rent for 4000 say even if it's 3500 most of your you know, if you're splitting the mortgage and you're renting another unit, I mean, you're, you're going to pay less, less than you would um, rent anywhere else also. And in this way, yep. you would be, um, you know, I don't know. I mean, then with that extra money, you can save it and strategize somewhere else. So there's a lot of different ways where you can look into. There's different ways to do this. And so here's the, here's the, the moral of the story. The moral of the story is that sometimes when you go to bat, you're not going to hit a home run, but at least get on base. Mm -hmm. Right, get a double, get a single, get a triple, get on base. Because mm -hmm. if you're not on base, you can't bring it in and score. Right? Here's what I mean. Sometimes you buy it might not be the most desirable thing you wanted to do, because maybe you know we all want to hit home runs, which means I just want to go buy a house and live in it by myself, blah blah blah. But maybe sometimes you just buy a two unit and do this arrangement, even though you have neighbors right next door, it's not the most ideal thing, but you use it as a stepping stone to then position yourself later. Because over time, if you're renting, you're never gonna build equity. And that's just free money. I mean, how many investments do you know give you a tax write-off and pay you while you're sleeping in it? Right. No other than real estate, okay, I, that I know of. Absolutely. And if you do, please let me know, because I haven't heard about it and I'm 52, okay? Right, and the freedom- And so you two-step it. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. That's how you do it, right? So but that means get in the game. Yes, and this shows you that you can get into San Francisco real estate, and you can make yeah. it happen, and you can make it affordable. Um, I have a property right now for anyone who's interested. It's one seven seven one what dash one seven seven three LaSalle in San Francisco. There you um, go. But you have to see the bigger picture. So if you ever want to strategize. I mean, these, you know, we do these videos just kind of give you different angles because a lot of times, you know, absolutely don't go in depth about like how things are made or how things happen, but we're here to absolutely. That's what we're here to do. It's just to give you some guidance, some education and to give you some, some solid advice based on what you want to accomplish. Now, when we run the numbers, if the numbers show that you can't do it by yourself, well, let's get creative. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Don't kill the dream, kill the method. And then let's re-strategize, redo it, restructure it, and let's get it done. Because look, I'll tell you something. These rates, these interest rates are not real. Here's what I mean. They're artificially low thanks to the Federal Reserve. That's just the bottom line. So what am I saying? They got nowhere to go but up. Now, the good news is that the Fed said they're not going to really touch rates until when? 2021, maybe. I think probably at the end of 2021, if, if anything. But my guess, probably 2022. You know why? Because it's going to take a while for all this to recover. If we even recover, I think it's a new world order, personally. I think we've been changed forever. Mm -hmm. That doesn't mean we're not going to have some sense of normalcy. Sure, we will. But I think the world has been shaken, and we're going to do things differently moving forward. And it's going to take a while for us to reconfigure and to get this economy and all the economies, quite frankly, back pumping. Look, we're still seeing collateral damage. Did you see that 24-hour uh, fitness went bankrupt yesterday? Yeah, but I saw that they were closing down like 10 locations in the Bay Area. But Yeah, but 130 overall. And that's just the beginning. Who knows? They're probably going to close more, right? But my point is, is that everybody's reorging. Mm -hmm. Everybody's reorging. So this is going to take time. I've heard a couple of numbers that say it's going to take 9 to 10 years, which, by the way, isn't that what it took from 2008? Yes, it did. And that, I think, was less far-reaching for sure what's happening now so this is going to take time take advantage of that mm -hmm. if anything i would say call us just to even talk about 
how you would like to envision your life in a few years and how you need to restructure your finances to get there. The last thing you want to do is just kind of float like a leaf in the wind. Do some planning. There's a lot of power in planning. You know, the old saying when I was a financial advisor was most people don't plan on failing. They just fail to plan. It's true. Nothing happens. Just get it in order. Start now. Yep. Start by looking at your budgets. Track your money. How many of you have tracked for 30 days everything you spend? By wow. the way, there's a great app called Expensify. It's free. I've used it for many years. It allows you to put in there, input every single thing you spend, and, and you put it into categories, meals and entertainment, utilities, mortgage payments, car payments, all that stuff, and it tracks and it gives you charts, and it'll show you exactly where your money is going. Track it first, change behaviors after. Because if you don't track it, you can't change what you don't track. It's just straight up truth. Yeah. So start that way. That, by the way, is the first step to homeownership, is knowing where's your money? Mm -hmm. You'd be surprised how much we spend. And believe me, I've been guilty of this too. You spend on things that just are not helping you get to that goal that you say you want to achieve. Mm -hmm. Sometimes we drink way too much coffee. And then second, you know, we might eat out a lot, especially, mm -hmm. right? When we're feeling kind of a certain way, mm -hmm. people have a tendency to eat more, eat out right now. People are getting tired now of cooking. <laughs> yeah, I'm starting to see that way. So they're ordering out more, right? At 30, 40, 50 bucks, 60 bucks a clip. It adds up. It adds up. No, absolutely. So enough of the preaching. My whole thing is that, you know, just start. Talk to professionals like Fatima and myself because we really care. And let's get a game plan going. You know, let's get a roadmap. Let's get that map so you can get exactly to where you say, not what we say, but where you say you want to go. All right, how, how do people get a hold of you, Fatima? You can call or text 415-756-4418. How about you, Ed? Uh, yeah, call me, 415-368-1149, or you can email me, ed at kuno, K-U-N as in Nancy, O, advisors, with an S at the end, dot com. On that note, have a great day. Take care of yourself. Make sure you stay healthy, stay safe, and stay positive because this too shall pass. Who knows when, but it will. Positivity is super important. And don't forget to reach out to the people in your life that add value and those professionals who want to get you there to the destination you say you want to get, whether it's my place back here or it's that brand new house, the nice house just like Fatima's. Mm. All right. Have a great day. Thank Take you. care.